in this lecture we will continue from where we left last time before the break and we are going to talk about system sequence diagrams so we are going to see why do we need these diagrams and what are these diagrams exactly and then we are going to follow the same case study which is the next generation point of sale system and see how we can uh, use the process sale use case for creating the system sequence diagrams and of course in the later end i will explain some guidelines for the same so before we continue let me update you where do we stand right now so we talked about the domain model and then now we are going to describe the system sequence diagrams and based on both of the above which is the domain model and system sequence diagram we will jump into the design model so let's look closely into the road map that we are going to follow for now so we talked about the use cases already and with the help of use cases we created our domain model the second thing that is going to be created with the help of domain model is the system sequence diagram so here we are going to create the system sequence diagram by taking input from our use cases and the domain model that we have previously created and finally the system sequence diagram and the domain model is going to be an input for our design model which includes our class diagram and some other artifacts from the uml so let's get started but before that if we look the same activities in the context of unified process model you will note that the sequence included use case diagram followed by the use case text that we have written which was the input for the system sequence diagrams so yes we are going to go for the system sequence diagrams with the help of the use case text that we have already written and this system sequence diagram artifact is going to be an input for the operation contracts which is our next lecture so for starting with the ssds which is the system sequence diagrams we are going to revisit the use cases that we have already written and the domain model will be used for working with the class diagrams later on whereas the ssds will be the simplified form for the system sequence diagrams so the system sequence diagrams model how interactions unfold so they are actually going to show the interaction between the system and the user one of the challenge in object oriented analysis in design is that the use cases actually show the functionality only whereas the system is object oriented so from this paradigm shift and this paradigm mismatch we will be gapping it with the help of the system sequence diagrams which are going to convert our functionality into objects so as a result we will not be losing any requirement and we will make sure that we are translating our requirements and getting the system in the form of object oriented representation so the requirements from the use cases ultimately become a responsibility for some object so we find the objects and the responsibilities which are the functions of the objects are actually coming from the requirements which are mentioned in the in the previous artifacts including the use case document the system sequence diagrams here will actually be representing one particular scenario from the use case so they will be showing the events that external actors generate uh, so we will be able to see the order of the events which are occurring we are we're also going to see the inter system events with the help of the system sequence diagrams so all the systems in system sequence diagrams are actually treated as a black box and the the emphasis the focus is that the diagram just shows the events which cross the system boundary so it says that we are going to capture all those events which are from actor to the system so remember th this is the uh, differentiating factor between system sequence diagram and the simple sequence diagrams which you used to see uh, previously 
in fact we are going to discuss them later on but the sequence diagrams are actually the actions the interactions between the uh, objects and classes of the system so it shows the internal view of the system whereas in system sequence diagrams remember the system will always be treated as the black box and this is why the system sequence diagrams only explain what system does so it really does not explain how it does it because it is a black box view so we will only only be able to see how the the, the actions and the uh, events are handled if we get to see the white box view if we get to see inside and that will be explained and uh, uh, highlighted with the help of sequence diagrams uh, one important thing that you must uh, remember is that the system sequence diagrams uh, are classically not part of the UML rather we have just created them by ourselves in fact this author of the book is actually using this notation and method just to get a clear view and input for our sequence diagrams before starting with the sequence diagrams we decided to create a black box view in fact a prior input uh, for the next step so to bridge the gap between use cases and classes in sequence diagrams uh, this is a what you can say a building block or a, a gap bridging element between the sequence diagrams and use cases we, we really cannot easily jump from use cases to sequence diagrams so, so we take the help from the system sequence diagrams and it also establishes the traceability of the requirement so we will be easily be able to trace uh, and find out that which requirement is mapping to which object oriented model at which particular place so use cases simply specify the functionality and uh, we already told that use cases is the time ordered series of function calls uh, that actor invokes on the system so we said that this is a dialogue between the system and the user so for creating the system sequence diagrams uh, the key tasks which we are going to follow include identifying the functions in the use case scenario so we will see where the functionalities are there in that particular use case scenario then we translate them into a uml function syntax we will see how we can do that and finally we draw a sequence diagram out of it and guys that's very obvious if you have uh, a good written complete and simple use cases uh, they are definitely going to be the input for the system sequence diagram so if you have good written use cases that means you have good created system sequence diagrams so remember once again this system sequence diagram is the interaction between actor and the system and that's why we are only considering the actor and the system here and uh, there is no explicit description or representation of the internal details of the system so we are not showing any internal classes of the system here so let's have a look at the notation of the system sequence diagram before we proceed any further so as we have already seen this notation for the actor so it represents the actor external actor to the system if there are any any loops in the interaction while we are drawing the diagram so we can use this guard expression mentioning what type of uh, guard it is and why we are writing it and we can write the conditions here in these square brackets uh, the return values can be shown in the dotted lines whereas the calls function calls to the system can be shown shown with the solid lines uh, so if you do not return anything the these return lines are optional so you can leave them as it is similarly you can uh, provide the parameters if you are passing some information while you are requesting or sending a request to the system that information will be represented in the form of parameters and lastly if you are representing the system you will be using this colon sign and this colon sign represents that this is an instance of a system so we also uh, put an underline here and uh, we will see in this in the topic of sequence diagram that how and why we put this colon here uh, whereas we can also specify the name of the instance but because this system 
is only a single system so we are not uh, making any name right here to understand the creation of system sequence diagrams we are taking a use case from our case study called the process sale use case and as i already told you that one scenario will be converted into a single system sequence diagram so we are taking a scenario from the process sale use case and with the help of this scenario we are going to understand that there are different steps involved uh, in in this uh, scenario which include making a sale then entering the item id ending the sale making a payment and then finally recording the sale and of course these broad steps include some detailed steps inside the scenario but we will only consider them and and you can actually convert any given main success scenario or any any particular scenario from the use case into these broad steps and then finally you identify and translate them into the system sequence diagram so how we are translating these steps into the system sequence diagrams i will explain you uh, in a short while but before that one important thing that you must notice is that we are not going to include this record sale uh, function into our system sequence diagrams so can you answer why we are not going to include that yes uh, the basic answer for this one is that this record sale is actually uh, not part of the system representation so, so what i call as that uh, the black box representation because this record sale is an internal mechanism which it will be taken place internally in the system it is not between the user and the system so we are only going to represent that information and that interaction in our ssd which is part of the interaction between user and the system only and all the details which are internal to the system which are white box they will not be part of the ssd so guys please notice here that i am actually translating uh, that uh, given use case scenario into uh, uh, this this given scenario is translated here into this system sequence diagrams and uh, from the previous slide that we have just seen we are actually placing all the methods that we have identified and we are using all the given informations in as a parameter and then creating our system sequence diagram so the interaction goes like this we are having the make new sale request and in terms after that in the form of a loop we are entering multiple items and giving them to the system in return the system is returning us the description in total every time once this this loop completes what we are going to do is to end the sale and once the sale ends the system tells us the total with the taxes and finally the payment is made and after the payment is made any change due and receipt is generated and there comes the part where we talked about the recording of the sale in the system so you you can see that we are not adding the record sale interaction in this diagram and this is again this is because uh, the system here is treated as the black box so we are not going to show the internal representations the internal details of the system one short observation is uh, regarding the name of the functions or the interaction messages that you are adding in your diagram so it says that uh, the naming word should be consistent with the domain so it's better that you are very specific and exact in in while while you're naming your method so enter item is a better name as compared to the scan and this is again once again because uh, the scan represents the uh, the system the internal working of the system so we might not know if we are scanning or not but the basic purpose here is to tell that we are entering the item and this item is being entered in the system so by now you have a very good idea how and why the system sequence diagrams are required but still let's have a look at what are some important highlights uh, in the purpose of the system sequence diagram 
so there the ssds are actually part of the use case analysis so you must notice that we are not uh, still entering in the design part still we are analyzing and the use case analysis as uh, an additional step you can see the bridging step which is called the ssd uh, so ssds represent uh, the system as a black box and it is providing the collaboration between systems and the actors one important underlying purpose of the ssds is that uh, they are going to help you for early cost estimation but they are very rarely used in the early phases so in the unified process model when we are going to use the uh, ssds they are helping us for estimating the cost whereas more of their use is in the later phases for clarifying major operations so uh, they are they are going to help us uh, to to prioritize the requirements uh, they are going to help us find out how to write the operation contracts which we are going to see later and uh, they are also going to help us in the testing phase so we will be able to know that fine okay let's suppose if uh, we are saying that enter item and then we get the total of the all the uh, items that have been entered so we will be able to test it uh, with the help of the system sequence diagram so they are going to guide us that what exact interactions are there so we will be easily deciding that which interactions should be tested for further reference, please uh, go and read chapter number 10 from the Applying Yogalan Patterns, which is titled as System Sequence Diagrams. Good luck!